As the people of Nepal move forward with their lives after the large earthquake of 2015, many are still fearful. If you are watching this now, you have much to be thankful for. Thousands of our neighbors and relatives here in Nepal did not survive the great earthquake. We have had hundreds of aftershocks since. News reports by geologists are predicting even larger and more deadly earthquakes as there is still much pressure under the Earth's surface in Asia. This news is not meant to keep you in fear, but rather to help you prepare. You may prepare your family and community in the following areas. One, bathe regularly to prevent the spread of disease. Two, if possible, store water and food in containers. Three, drink only clean water. Boil any questionable water. Four, secure your house or shelter to prevent harm from future earthquakes. But even the best preparations cannot assure that you will escape disaster when it comes. The reality is that death will come to every person. No one knows when or where that will happen. But a wise person will make preparation not only for surviving natural disasters, but also for his inevitable death. As the shaking of our church building subsided after the recent 7.9 magnitude earthquake in Kathmandu, my six-year-old son looked up at me and said something most unusual. I had been teaching the Bible when someone began to run toward the door. I had no idea what was happening, but then I realized it really finally came. We were having an earthquake. In fact, it seemed like the building was shaking back and forth, dancing up and down. Some of the others in the congregation started to crawl under furniture. We cried out to God to protect us. As I hovered over my kids, I expected the worst. In fact, we were under at the bottom of a four-story uh, flat house. I just knew the levels were going to come down like dominoes. After the building stopped shaking about a minute later, my son told me with an assuring voice, Daddy, I was not afraid to die. I would have just gone to heaven. In the following hours, I spoke with nearby friends and neighbors. Many who are Hindus and Buddhists have admitted how fearful they were. One person had said that their gods did not help them. They certainly did not have peace in their heart and were not ready to die. My friend, are you full of fear today? Are you ready to die? What would have happened if you had died in the earthquake? It seems that everyone cries out to somebody for help when circumstances are beyond their control. Who do you pray to? We should only pray to someone who has the power to give life and the ability to protect life. This God must be real and more powerful than you and your problems. There is only one God who meets the qualifications and deserves to be worshipped. The Most High God in Heaven was never born, and He will never die. He has always lived. He is perfect and all-powerful. Nobody can make Him, for He is the Creator of all things. He made the world and every person in it. Since He has the power to make man, it is reasonable to accept that He has given man a way to know Him. He chose to reveal Himself and purpose for mankind in a book called the Holy Bible. In this divine book, we learn that He loves man and gave man the ability to choose between right and wrong. God desires for man to know Him and love Him in return. This powerful God who gives life is the only one who has the right to make the rules. He told the first man Adam and his wife Eve that they could eat from any tree except for one. If they didn't listen, they would die. Unfortunately, they chose to disobey God and wanted to please themselves. Ever since, everybody who is born from Adam and Eve naturally thinks impure thoughts, is selfish, and does bad things. That is why people die, no matter where they are born or what religion they follow. Every man-made religion is an attempt to make himself right with God. But the sad thing is, no matter how much good you try to do, you still have your sins and bad deeds that God must judge you for. The Bible tells us that all unbelievers will be cast into the lake of fire. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. You can prepare today. Since man's first sin, God has always had a plan to deliver man and restore him to fellowship with God. We are helpless to make ourselves right with God, so God made a way to come to man. He became a man and lived on earth nearly 2,000 years ago. His name is Jesus Christ. He never sinned and only helped the needs of others. However, he was hated by many people because he told them that he was God. The people demanded that he should die. Although he had the power to escape, he knew this was the plan to rescue people from sin. He willingly died in your place, taking the blame for your sin. He endured the judgment that you deserve. Romans 5.8 says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This is the greatest act of love. We can have peace from God only if we make peace with God. He made only one way to come to him, and that is through his Son, Jesus Christ. It is the blood of Christ that makes us clean in God's eyes. John 14, verse 6 says that Jesus uh, is the only way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but through him. Jesus not only died in your place, but he came back to life three days later. He defeated everything that causes us to fear, including the devil, demons, and death. What will be your response? Just as many were not prepared for the earthquake, many today are not ready to die. You have to make a decision if you will obey what God says in order to prepare to meet Him. Number one, you must admit that you have rebelled against God and have sinned against Him by worshiping other idols or trusting in your own good works. Two, you must turn from your way and recognize that Jesus is the only Lord and Savior. Three, believe that He died in your place and rose again to give you eternal life. And lastly, be willing to accept this gift of eternal life by simply asking God for it. God will give mercy and forgiveness to the one who is truly sorry and ask for mercy. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You may simply pray to God, I know I am a sinner and cannot do anything to save myself. I reject trusting in my own works and religion. I believe Jesus is the only way to save me, and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I receive you to be my Savior and my Lord. Please take me to heaven when I die. My friend, if you have made a decision to follow Jesus Christ right now, then please contact me so that we can help you to learn more about the Bible. We would be happy to give you your very own free Bible. We would love to answer any questions that you might have. You may email the author at pilgrimoftruth at yahoo.com.